Something big happened in Toronto this weekend. Thousands of pro-Palestinian demonstrators hit the streets of Toronto. I like bigger dicks. Thousands of people took to the streets of Toronto on Saturday to protest the ongoing war in the Middle East. Okay, well, right off the bat, they're no, they're protesting the ongoing genocide in Gaza. But again, it's it, this is city news, right? We're not we're not going to get too spicy on city news. They're just going to be as they're going to be as impartial as they possibly can be. According to the Toronto Police Service, demonstrators began marching eastbound on College Street from University Avenue and made their way to Young Dundas Square just after 2 p.m. Used to live there. <clears throat> Officers warned residents to expect major traffic delays and to consider alternative routes of travel. See the tweet there. <clears throat> Entire neighborhoods have been destroyed. Entire families have been wiped out of the Gaza civil registry because of Israel's ongoing genocide and mass slaughter of innocent civilians. Uh, says Farah Mantar, spokesperson for the group Toronto for Palestine. As a Palestinian from Gaza who cannot go back and see what her grandfather's built in Gaza, for her, I'm just outraged. I'm embarrassed by Canada's response, she added. So am I. And we'll get to this later, but I've been nothing but embarrassed all day seeing the filth from not only conservatives, not only liberals, but even some members of the NDP. All this filth from this, this, this pseudo false flag that is October 7th. All these people clutching their pearls and pretending that the worst part of all this isn't the catastrophic death toll in Palestine. But the events of a single day, which let me remind you, was an effect, not a cause. There's a cause and an effect. Shit like October 7th is an effect. Don't let anybody ever convince you or try to convince you that this ha this started on October 7th because it didn't. And I'll give you a great pushback for conservatives who try and frame it like that. Because a lot of conservatives are perfectly fine admitting that the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine didn't start when the Russian invasion happened, that there are things that happened beforehand. Hello, 2014. Um, make, throw that directly back in their face and say, okay, well, is it possible that this also did not happen in a vacuum? Is it possible that bad guys didn't just go, ha ha ha, we, we hate Jews, we're going to kill them, and that's all of the context we need for this? Anyway, <clears throat> protesters who gathered at Young Dundas Square are demanding the federal government sever international ties with Israel be the least they could do. The rally was organized in part by several organizations, including the Palestinian Youth Movement. Demonstrators at King's College Circle at the University of Toronto campus for their own rally in support for uh, the support of Palestinian people. Just months ago, the area became the site of a student encampment that lasted for nearly two months. Saturday's gathering eventually turned into a march with demonstrators waving signs and chanting along the downtown core. That's just, that's a beautiful picture. Don't ever go to that McDonald's though. The last time I went to that fucking McDonald's, okay, I got a McChicken and the middle of the McChicken was frozen. I'm not kidding. I did take it back. They made me another one. It was overcooked. I just said, fuck it and left. Don't ever go to that McDonald's. Anyway. <clears throat> the demonstrations come ahead of the one year anniversary of the October 7th Hamas led attack on Israel 
That resulted in the death of approximately 1,200 people and 250 others uh, taken hostage. Thanks in large part to the Israeli Defense Force, who, because of their own psychotic policies and protocols, are perfectly fine just killing their own. Hamas is a Palestinian militant group which has governed over Gaza since 2007 as, and has been listed as a terrorist entity by the government of Canada for over two decades. <clears throat> in the immediate aftermath of the attack, Israel declared war on Hamas and responded with a barrage of rocket fire that has caused mass death and destruction in Gaza. Since the start of the war, more than 42,000 Palestinians have been killed. That number is greatly under-exaggerated. Like, like the actual death, the actual death toll, toll is much, much higher. And an estimated 92,000 have been injured according to health officials in the occupied territories. The United Nations estimates that more than half of the dead are women and children. Over the last year, tensions have grown into a region-wide conflict between Israel, Lebanon, and Iran. Israel and the militant group Hezbollah have traded fire across the Lebanon border almost daily since the day after Hamas's cross-border attack. <clears throat> last month, pages pagers used by hundreds of Hezbollah members exploded almost simultaneously in parts of Lebanon as well as Syria. The attack killed at least 12 people, including two uh, young children, and wounded thousands more. The operation is widely believed to have been carried out by Israel. Just say Israel did it. Come on. Like, like who else is going to do that? Wait, you, what, China? Russia? The call's coming from inside the house. <clears throat> then on September 28th, an Israeli airstrike killed Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah's longtime leader and one of the Iranian-backed group's founding members. Iran retaliated in defense of their allies by sending 180 missiles into Israel that left residents scrambling for shelter. Which we all know because they haven't shut the fuck up about it since it happened. <clears throat> it turns out people who are just fine with genociding a whole group of people sure are real big victims when they get some smoke back. Nearly 2,000 people have been killed in Lebanon in the latest conflict, most of them since September 23rd, according to the Lebanese Health Ministry. As the first anniversary of the October 7th Hamas-led attack on Israel approaches, authorities in the Greater Toronto area are pre preparing for potential protests and acts of violence. Well, our own police have committed acts of violence against the protesters, so I'm not sure how well they're preparing. Toronto Police Service Chief Myron uh, Demke uh, announced last week that there will be an increased presence of undercover and un uh, uniformed officers throughout the city in the coming days. Marked police vehicles will also be patrolling some communities with static red and blue lights to enhance visibility. In addition, <clears throat> three mobile command posts will be stationed in Jewish neighborhoods, one at Bathurst and Glencairn, another at Bathurst and Shepherd, and a third at Bathurst and Fitch. Additionally, a fourth mobile command post will be deployed to various mosques across the city. Police in Durham and York Region announced a similar move on Wednesday, saying they'll be deploying more officers and command posts. <clears throat> Near faith-based institutions, schools, and community centers. And as it shows, that was over 30,000 people marching in Toronto. Toronto. Um, from the accounts PYM Toronto and Palestinian Youth Movement. Toronto. Over 30K take the streets in Toronto to protest the ongoing genocide in Gaza that has been now raging on for nearly one year. In our thousands, in our millions, 
The masses of the world stand with Palestine, stand with justice, and stand with freedom. Together, we show the world that when we march together, we demonstrate the power, our power and our determination to see a future where Palestine is liberated from the murderous Zionist occupation. Long live Gaza, long live Palestine. <clears throat> and let me tell you, let me tell you, Canada's resident reactionaries are having very, very big feelings over this. They are, they are very mad, as I'm going to demonstrate. See some of the social media shitting and farting, as it will. This is Alan Fryer. Go. So Ukrainian and Israel flag. So basically, I cannot lick enough boots. They want the world to know that Toronto is no longer safe for Jews. Me. Like, look at that. And you've got you got a bunch of propagandized people. How long will it take to deport this group? Like, they sound like Americans. I don't see any Canadian flags. <laughs> well, no shit. Nobody's protesting a genocide in Canada, you fucking idiot. Anyway, we got we got tons of these. People are just people are just losing their fucking minds. <clears throat> well, Toronto, we are famous again. Not for the mafia premier brother of the crack smoking mayor who just raised the public park in the cover of night, but for hosting hateful parades that are more violent than the KKK protests of the deep south. Fuck me. And uh, of course, Brianna Wu, who is the a professional bad take haver, saying free Palestine all openly calling for violence and terrorism. This is a this is a fin outstanding take. The KKK regularly came to my college, Ole Miss, to protest, and we let them. It's a free speech issue, but they never co openly called for violence like Free Palestine. So they're essentially uh, Brianna here is essentially trying to explain to you that uh, protesting a genocide is actually worse uh, than the KKK. <clears throat> That's a bit of a false equivalency, but that's her, that's, that's the intent of what she's saying. Because she's introducing one group and another group and using a comparison as to what one group is doing and what the other group did not do. So it's, uh, I will give Brianna credit. Uh, she is very good at uh, linguistic games and manipulating dialogue. She's a very manipulative person. She's she's good. She's good at. She's essentially very good at bullshit. So. And next, let's uh, let's call it the Wheel of Chud Tears. <clears throat> From John Fraser. Anyone who thinks these protests are about a ceasefire in Gaza is sadly mistaken. Well, uh, no, actually, they're about a ceasefire in Gaza. And that, like, that's just it. And this is what this is what Zionists have to do. OK. The protest is just about a ceasefire. That's it. That's all it's fucking about. That's all it was ever about. That's it. But they have to pile heaps of narrative. Look at all this narrative. They have to pile heaps of narrative on top of it because if you just use your eyeballs and your ears and you just observe what's going on without any kind of spin or narrative, you will immediately be horrified. You will immediately be like, this needs to stop. This is atrocious. I can't be a part of this. This is fucking nuts. <clears throat> but... Once you introduce this narrative, once you start inserting all of this spin, 
That's how it becomes something that's at least slightly palatable to gullible or fearful reactionary people. They're organized and funded by the IRGC globally to spread unrest across the Western world. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just spreading unrest. Uh, to what end? What is the point of this unrest? Like, what are what are you try What are they trying to accomplish? Just make people feel uncomfortable. Like, what what are you doing, man? They have normalized anti-Semitism and the glorification of terrorist organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah. The Liberal Party government, provincial and municipal governments, and university leaders have let this movement fester and grow for a year now. It has to be stopped. It's long past time to crack down and put an end to this madness. It's time to take back Canada. <clears throat> Man, and this is how they get you. This is how propaganda gets people. They are pretending that the Liberal Party is on the side of Hamas and Gaza and and the bad guy, the the terrorists. We're back in 2003. You're either with us or you're with the terrorists. The propaganda has not evolved one fucking iota. But this is how they get you. Because by painting them as like objectively on the opposite side, they're painting the milquetoast, lukewarm, objective support of Israel from the Liberal Party of Canada as not enough. They're presenting it as this is as far in support of that direction you can go. It's another example of Overton window management. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's the exact same thing with, uh, you know, Zion Dunn and the, the chuds over over south of here. Where they're saying Kamala Harris is like too supportive of Hamas. Kamala Harris hates Israel, which is ridiculous. Her administration is literally giving them insane amounts of money to to slaughter innocent people right now. That's just reality. That's what's happening. But because that side is even more extreme with the issue. They get to they get to pretend that they're the they're the they're the true ally to Israel, which again is just it's, it's psychotic, is what it is. It's from Mark Towley. His name isn't Towley, but it is now. He's Towley. Mark Towley. It's hard to be proud of Canada tonight. It's unbelievably depressing to see such hatred and evil on our streets. To know it is visceral, deep-seated, and spewing, not just from lunatics, but from regular Canadians, neighbors, family, rich, poor, those who should be leaders. It's hard to believe in Canada. I guess this is like a boomer thing. He's like starting his sentences off with caps lock. When there was no one to lead us away from hatred, to inspire people to be better than they truly are. To take in action against this malevolent force that by diabolical design twists our innocent freedoms against us to destroy our freedom. <clears throat> so again, they have to paint, they have to paint opposition to an objectively bad thing. They have to paint the opposition as the hatred. They have to paint the opposition as the objectively bad thing. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to, trying to switch people. Trying to switch people over. Like, don't pay attention to what Israel is doing over there. No, no, no. Don't just come away. Don't pay attention. Pay attention to what these people are doing over here. And if you focus them enough, shiny object, You'll get them so hyper-focused on that, that that's going to be the subject of their ire. And all of a sudden, if they consume enough propaganda, that's when the self-rationalization start. Where it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe Israel's defending themselves, blah, blah, blah. These are all tactics that are tried and true. Uh, anyway.
Corey Morgan. The anniversary of a mass terror attack where Hamas members from Gaza went on an orgy of rape and killing of people in a music festival approaches. CTV puts out a a piece weeping for how Palestinians will feel on that day. Fuck off, CTV. Again, you're seeing the framing. So it's no different than any other... It's no different from how we grew up with the war in Iraq and how every politician, no matter how many Arabs they killed, no matter how much land they took, no matter how much horror they committed in the Middle East, they just pointed back to 9-11 and said, remember, remember, look at this. That's why we get to do all this stuff over here, because that happened. And if you you're not allowed to disagree with what we're doing now, because if you do, it means you like that that happened. This is the this is the this is the soup head that they are trying to uh, create in people. And again, for this, you have to ignore. You have to ignore the. <clears throat> excuse me. You have to ignore the death toll in Gaza. You have to ignore everything else about this story, because again, they're just going to keep po- they're just going to keep pointing back. They're just going to keep pointing back to the bad thing that happened that manufactures consent for all the bullshit they're trying to do. The propaganda, as I said, has not changed one bit throughout our entire lives. And this is the leader of the circus with his statement. Here's Milhouse who somehow just keeps getting worse. I don't know how, but I guess for a conservative, it's not fucking difficult. One year ago today, genocidal and sadistic terrorists carried out the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. They burned people alive, tortured children in front of their parents, mutilated dead civilians, and posted these demonic cruelties online for the world to see. All the while, their cowardly bosses and benefactors watched from Tehran and other faraway safe havens. 101 hostages are still being held. Let them go. Meanwhile, Jews in Canada face grotesque anti-Semitism in the streets and by the two-faced and weak leadership of their prime minister placating lawless mobs. And yet Israel and the Jewish people fight on and live on. Western democratic values depend on destroying Tehran's proxy armies of Hamas and Hezbollah. Canadians conservatives have not and will not waver. We won't bow to the radical, woke, anti-Zionist Jew haters. Hey, Pierre, you're you're getting you're flying a little close to the sun here, buddy. Anti-Zionist. So right off the bat, you're like, oh, no, no, no. It's not the. Let me make myself clear. It's not the. It's not the Jew hate. It's the it's the Zion hate that we're against. The Zionism criticism cannot cannot be allowed. Because never again is now tomorrow and every day after we unapologetic unapologetically stand with Israel through fire and water and unite with Jews to say, I'm not even saying that. Fuck Israel and fuck this idiot. And <clears throat> I have to give a shout out uh, to my homie Tyler, who was on the show, and I very much hope to have him back very soon. The VIX Collective. 462 dead Palestinians before October 7th. 10% of them children. You said nothing. Two weeks before October 7th, Israel bombed Gaza for three straight days. Again, nothing. Israel abandons their own to kill Palestinian kids. And you say, am you Israel Jai? Fuck you, you are complicit. This is a post from the Times of Israel. We later found out that Hamas had offered on October 9th or 10th to release all the civilian hostages in exchange for the IDF not entering the Strip. 
but the government rejected the offer, which is correct. Because in case it wasn't perfectly fucking clear, in case it wasn't perfectly clear, this was never about the hostages, ever. And, and they say that themselves because they're like, oh, ugh, they're still hostages. Yeah, because Israel's not doing anything to get them back because they don't care. Why would they get rid of the hostages? They just point back to, but the hostages as justification for them committing their blood, for them feeding their bloodlust. The hostages are a prop. That's all they ever were. Anyway, uh, just some quick thoughts, some closing thoughts on uh, on the whole <clears throat> on the whole divide uh, up here in Canada with Palestine. Um, you know, much like much like our brothers to the south of us, you know, I am seeing a very a very steep divide here, and I'm seeing it across friend groups, families right across the board where you've got people who are still completely toeing the line. You know, they don't, they don't even make the connection between shit like, you know, the war in Iraq and other, like other psyops where, you know, they brought people on board with a single event and used it to justify committing mass atrocities because they've done this before. You've got to divide of those people. And then you've got to divide of people as well across the political spectrum here in Canada who are pushing back and saying enough. And we're starting to see it more and more as not just like a far left to left thing, but a across the board thing. I know conservatives who are pushing back against it. I know libertarians who are pushing back against it. Um, anarchists, of course, but they were, they were one of the first, uh, <clears throat> you know, I know people who, for example, were lifelong CPC supporters. They were always supporting the Conservative Party. They're not voting for him anymore because of this issue. So you've got a really big divide, but I think I think the one thing that protest showed is that the unrest over this issue is too big to contain any longer. This is no longer a partisan issue. And the reason that all of the, the talking heads in Canada are screaming about this protest at the top of their fucking lungs, they're just seething and typing into Twitter. This is 87. The reason they're doing that is because they're starting to realize that they're losing control. They no longer have control of the narrative. They're no longer able to even in 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 a charitable light defend what's going on over there. And there's too many people for them to drown out any longer. Anyway, um, my prediction is that support for this is just going to grow. Um, you know, as as Canadians, we're kind of limited in our influence, um, but we absolutely can do more. Uh, we should be doing more. Ultimately, it does lie on the West collectively saying, um, we're not helping you in this anymore. Uh, you need to end this right now. Um, but I do find it very enjoyable watching these, watching these reactionaries just lose their fucking minds over the people standing up and saying, we're not here for this. Because that's what they're doing. 